Cyber Cables, everyone. Are you as excited as I am right now? <laughs> You should be. I think the cyber capos are going to be really, really cool if we can pull this off. So a capo is a device that sits on the strings of a music instrument and makes them shorter and holds down the strings to the fretboard by itself. But what's so cyber about our capo is that it's four individual capos, one capo per string on the bass guitar. So capo or capodastro has been used since 1646 by Giovanni Doni or something like that, I read on Wikipedia. But they didn't have a cyber capo. <laughs> I'm very happy for this idea. This has been an idea that has been long in the running. And the main idea is that it will save the resource I have least of when playing the Marble Machine X, my hands. I will be able to set all the four strings to the notes I want them to play and then leave the bass guitar and go do other things with my hand. Pull a muting lever or play the vibraphone manually or speed up and speed down the machine, whatever. And whenever I want the bass guitar to change chords, I can just slide the individual couples around into a new configuration or I can also play the bass strings manually higher than the couples. Normally, the loose strings on a bass guitar is E, A, G, G. So one way to use these cyber capos is just to set the lower notes to what I want them to be. Maybe I want the lower notes to be a G major chord, or maybe I want the A string to play C. It's going to be very, very useful and very, very fun. <laughs> Only on winter on Wednesdays. <laughs> And here you can see there's a hole in the head of this bass guitar. And this comes from the fact that we're using a five stringed bass guitar with only four strings. So this hole is where the fifth tuner used to be. And now I can use this hole for a mounting bracket. You saw I made a bracket with tape. If you can avoid making measurements, I always try to avoid making measurements. Just take real world measurements, so to speak, that speeds up the process a lot. And I'm making some test fingers here. I'm just adding them to the linear bearings. So with this measuring arm here, I can make sure that the linear bearings are parallel with the strings. So I can see up here, it's touching perfectly high twice. We go here, we need to shim the neck upwards. Okay, this value is pretty close. First I was just planning to weld the bracket on here and have it non-adjustable, but now I realize that I will be very happy with an adjustable bracket. I'm making this bracket adjustable in every direction in the most idiotic way you can, and I love it. I'm just making the holes oversized so it can go side to side, and then I'm just gonna use shim washers underneath it to adjust the height. It's really, really, the simplest way I can think of of getting control in like four directions. So here you can see the height control and here you can see the sideways control. And this will be very important to make the linear bearings perfectly parallel with all the four strings. So now I'm adjusting the linear rails parallel in this direction to the neck. I'm not going to do it parallel to the string. I think it's more important that it's parallel to the wooden neck where it's going to push down the string. So I'm measuring with my temporary fingers and I'm seeing that there's more space here, three millimeters. And here is flush. It means that we should remove some washers here. Taking one of these out. Now the height here is adjusted. We can start to check this way. Our test point is touching the string. Push it all the way up. Camera is fooling that angle a little bit. It's actually quite good in real life. I'm super happy about the airy design. There's very bare minimum of parts. In addition to this big M10 bolt, we have these two M5 screws that are also clamping down to prevent this from sliding. So I tapped threads in the metal underneath. And then to over-engineer this, I have these set screws and they have a little sharp 
point. So once I clamp this down, they will really prevent this part from sliding. So this is not going anywhere and I left this bolt very long because it's going to be a support for later to support the head from the Marble Machine X frame. So this right here is the first capo arm made from spring steel. And this arm sits here and touches the string here. When I was checking these tests, I was never really happy with how parallel they were with the strings and I thought just well, I made some kind of miscalculation here, but I thought it was in the okay range. But now I know why they're not parallel. I made a mistake, let me show you. So first of all, here's the strings, and we measured how much they're flaring out earlier. So we're seeing it kind of from this perspective now. Here's the linear rails, and without thinking, I made this parallel with E, this with A. But I know that that's not how the plan is, because if you look at the routing, to reach the strings we have to go from this linear rail to the E string. From this one over that arm to the A string. So this linear rail has to be parallel with A string. This one has to be parallel with E string, and that was why they are not parallel. So I recalculated these distances to the new setup and this is the number of extra washers I need to put in between the spacings. So I used these washer stacks to make this system adjustable. So that turned out good. <laughs> so here's the new setup and now you can see that the two middle linear rails are flaring out much more. So the test arm is now on the E string sitting on the second linear bearing. So the black line is above the string. When we travel down the neck, it stays above the string. We nailed it. This is parallel. So I made this fingertip out of black Delrin and I cut two M3 threads in it. Delrin is a good bushing material. It can slide over surfaces without getting torn up. Okay, so I want to add downwards pressure. It's not pushing enough on the string. The way I'm doing that is to add washers between the Delrin and the spring steel. So I think it's adding a little bit too little pressure. So now three shim washers. Uh, I invested in some SM57s and check this out. These are the line boxes for the bass guitar. Deep talking bass, here we go. Flat wound. So if you listen here, you can hear the wound. And here's the new flat wound. It's almost completely flat. So if I want the sound of the flat wound, which I think I want, they will wear down these Delrin fingertips much slower. So I never tried these line boxes, but there's two channels. So I need two of these for the four channels of the bass guitar. And Marcus, the drummer from Wintergarten, recommended these. So it's going to be very fun to try them. Okay, so the purpose of this arm was to test if the spring seal was strong enough and if the Delrin seems like a good material choice and I think it's yes on both. So we've done this and I can now make the correct arms, all four of them.
everyone i love this this is only a prototype because the linear bearings are too short i can't really play the high notes with this system but i wanted to show you all these sketches from the team because behind the scenes we have been working hard on a more complicated version with an on and off system so you could click the couples up and down to have them go on and off the strings and in the end i think we actually didn't reach a good solution so I decided to try a simplified prototype but I want to give a huge shout out to the whole Fantastic Marble Machine X team for pouring so much love and heart into this design discussion. Maybe we can solve the on off in future versions and as always I want to say a huge thanks to all the Vintergatan patrons and YouTube members for supporting this crazy pipe dream. With the Cyber Capos we're one step closer to having this machine actually playing some music. It's getting there, it's taking very much time but it's getting there. Thank you so much for watching and see you on the next Vintergatan Wednesdays. <laughs>